सहनो भुनक्तो सह वीर्यम करवावहै तेजस्विनावधीतमस्तु माविद्विशावहै ओम शांति 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 दशरथ नंदन Shri Ram 
राम जय राम जय जय राम श्री 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 राम जय राम जय 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 राम जय जय राम अतुलित बलधाम हेम शैलाभदेह धनुजवन कृशानु ज्ञानीनाग्रगण्यम सकलगुण निधान वानराधीश रघुपति प्रिय भक्त वात जात नमा रघुपति प्रिय भक्त वात जात नमा हमल प्रोस्ट्रेशन टू वन एंड ऑल प्रसेंट हियर So yesterday we have seen Hanuman ji crosses the ocean overcoming the three obstacles Mainaka Surasa and Simhika clears the immigration also Lankini blesses Hanuman ji. Hanuman ji enters Lanka. <coughs> Searches everywhere for Sita Mata. But then he finds a temple-like structure which was very unique in Lanka. A temple-like palace. It was the palace of Vibhishana. But Hanuman ji was doubtful. But when Vibhishana got up chanting the name of the Lord, because it was Brahma Murta, Vibhishana got up chanting the name of the Lord. So then Hanuman ji goes and introduces himself. Both of them spend nice time in satsang, glorifying the Lord, purifying the mind. getting absorbed in the bliss of devotion then finally vibhishana guides hanuman ji to where sita mata stays so it was in ashoka vatika hanuman ji takes a size of a small mosquito hides behind a leaf and he sees sita mata there seated under ashoka tree what was her condition very thin because almost for 11 months sita mata had not eaten anything not slept not taken any rest her hair had become matted no bath also but what was she doing she was looking at her feet and remembering the lotus feet of the lord and constantly she was chanting the name of the lord So Hanuman ji did not know how to start a conversation because one thing was sure Sita Mata would never look at anyone there never trust anyone there 
it was at that time ravana comes along with along with his queens ravana tries all his level best sama dana bheda danda in order to convince sita mata persuade sita mata but nothing worked ravana said o oh, sita even if you look at me i will make this mandodri and all the other queens your servant me they will serve you you will be the chief queen so what did sita mata do she plucked a blade of grass assuming that this blade of grass is ravana and what did she say oh ten headed monster dashamukha is it ever possible that in the presence of a glow worm in the presence of a firefly is it ever possible that the lotus can ever blossom lotus blossoms only in the presence of sun so if bhagwan shri ramchandra ji is sun you are a glow worm ravana becomes extremely disturbed he takes out his sword charges towards sita mata as though to kill her but then mandodri interferes then ravana gives a warning that within one month if you don't persuade she, he gives a warning to all those rakshasis present there within one month if you don't persuade her i will kill her he shouts at them and goes away all these rakshasis they try to disturb sita mata but it was at that time trijata calls all of them says that yesterday night i saw a dream and what was the dream a monkey comes and burns the entire lanka our king ravana was seen seated on a donkey naked with all his hands and heads cut off and this donkey was moving towards southern direction which means he is very soon going to die vibhishna is going to become the king bhagwan himself comes with a procession and takes back sita mata this is the kind of dream i have seen this is a vision in a very few days this vision is definitely going to come true so therefore don't disturb her so all those rakshasis they do namaskar to sita mata and go away then sita mata asks trijata oh mother can you do a favor for me what is it amma i don't want to exist any longer this pain of separation is really killing me i am not able to handle this this pang of separation i want to put an end to this miserable wretched life can you just arrange a funeral pyre so that i can just burn away this physical body trijata tries her level best to console sita mata then finally she says no in this late night no fire is available and she goes away so now sita mata has only one thought how to burn this body and for that fire is necessary so she looks at the stars asking the stars can one of them fall down and give some fire for me then she looks at the moon you are so sh- shining so bright why don't you give some fire then finally her attention goes to that leaf that golden leaf which appeared like a flame of fire and just behind that leaf hanuman ji was hiding there so she literally asking oh ashoka tree why don't you make your name sarthaka your name is ashoka the one who removes sorrow why don't you give some fire and so sita mata was looking at literally hanuman ji who was just behind the leaf asking for fire it is at that time hanuman ji drops the ring prabhu mudrika the ring is dropped and as the ring comes down that gold ring shining sita mata thinks it is some fire and she immediately grabs it but then it was cold to touch 
so she looks at it and there it was clearly written you know bhagwan's name was written on the mudrika she recognizes that this is bhagwan's mudrika first she was excited joyful but suddenly she was filled with anxiety fear how did this mudrika come here is it that bhagwan was defeated no it is not possible is it that bhagwan is killed no that is also not possible then how did this mudrika come here so it is at that time that hanuman ji sings the glory of bhagwan in a very sweet tone full of devotion and listening to this glory of bhagwan all the sorrows of sita mata vanishes she searches for the person who is singing and she doesn't find anyone there then she says whoever is singing this can you just please come in front of me so at that time hanuman jumps that small mosquito size monkey the moment sita mata sees this form she immediately turns her face away thinking that this is some kind of maya magical trick played by this ravana she turns away then hanuman ji says oh mother this ring i only have brought i am ramaduta hmm. so then she asks for the proof how is it that human beings are in association with monkeys so then hanuman ji describes all the story how when sita mata when she was abducted she saw some monkeys there and she threw away all the ornaments and how sugriva the king of monkeys showed these ornaments to bhagwan and now they are in search of sita mata the way hanuman ji spoke all these words a lot of devotion lot of faith lot of humility lot of concern because very many times the voice also you know whether a person is telling the truth or lie you can make out from the facial expression you can make out from the tone from the pitch the body language so sita mata understood that manasa vacha karmana this person is truly a devotee of the lord sita mata then says oh hanuman i was literally drowning in an ocean of sorrow it was at this time that you have come like a huge ship literally saving me from this ocean of sorrow oh hanuman tell me how is bhagwan along with his younger brother hmm. bhagwan is so compassionate he is an ocean of compassion he is so tender hearted he is the one who gives joys to his devotees how is it that how is it that he has become so so stone hearted hmm? rude for so many months he has not even come not even enquire i think bhagwan has forgotten me so saying sita mata literally plunged into depression rejection so at that time hanuman ji said no no amma that is not true in fact the truth is how much you love bhagwan bhagwan loves twice as much you love hmm. now this is true if you see jeevatma and paramatma if you see the relationship is similar relationship if you see from that bhakti standpoint hmm. the love which bhagwan has for us it is infinite love it is unconditional love it is perfect love our love is not that perfect but bhagwan's love for us is absolutely perfect hmm. so there is no exaggeration in whatever is being said so mother and then hanuman ji gives a message of bhagwan to sita mata so the essence of the message is oh sita whatever is favorable has become unfavorable the moment you got separated from me the amount of sorrow that i am experiencing only i know only my mind knows i hope you understand how much i love you so that message was given listening to this message sita mata was completely immersed in love for bhagwan 
Then Hanuman ji said, Oh mother, all these rakshasas are nothing for Bhagawan. In the fire of arrows of Bhagawan, all these rakshasas will, they are like moth. How the moths easily get burnt up in the fire, the huge flames. In the same way, all these rakshasas will be destroyed in front of Bhagawan's arrows. In fact, O oh Mother, it is only because we did not know where you were. That is why so much of delay has happened. Now that we know, very soon Bhagawan is going to come along with his army of monkeys and soon all these rakshasas will be killed and then mother you will be taken back in fact i myself can take you back but i don't have any permission oh mother that is why i am helpless so when hanuman ji said that all these monkeys are going to come and conquer these rakshasas <laughs> sita mata looked at him because his size was that of a mosquito mosquito sized monkey saying that we all vanaras will come and destroy rakshasas so sita mata said all monkeys are of your size oh hanuman so then hanuman ji had to show because to win the trust of sita mata because sita mata was not in a position to believe that these monkeys can conquer these rakshasas so then hanuman ji become huge powerful and sita mata was struck with awe and wonder with a kind of power and majesty which he had immediately hanuman ji became small again and said oh mother don't look at me with so much of appreciation <laughs> because we are mere monkeys we know only to jump from one branch to another all this power strength etc you are seeing it all belongs to bhagwan what is it that is not possible by the grace of the lord everything is possible by the grace of the lord <laughs> generally the snakes are considered to be the food for the garuda but by the grace of the lord it is possible that even garuda may be eaten away by snake that is a power of grace anything is possible in fact i saw one video also <laughs> regarding this so this garuda caught the snake you can find it in on youtube a very interesting video it was so as far as the garuda is concerned this snake is nothing is a food so it was caught and it was about to eat what happened was this snake from behind caught hold of this and then finally the predator became the victim and that snake ate away that bird is a very so when i read that suddenly i thought of that video so anything is possible in this world so therefore the point is this hanuman ji was saying oh mother all the strength that you are seeing in me it all belongs to bhagwan alone by the grace of bhagwan what is it that is not possible kartum makartum anyatha kartum shakta bhagwan may do something he may do something totally different he may not even do that also that is the power of grace so when sita mata saw this unique combination in hanuman ji on one side he was extremely powerful wise on the other side he was extremely humble now this is a very very rare combination a person who is weak he is humble that's nothing great a person who is strong generally that person is arrogant but here is a unique combination here is a person who is absolutely strong at the same time absolutely humble also and sita mata was completely in awe of this personality of hanuman ji and she felt that i must bless hanuman ji and then she said oh my dear son oh my dear son she started blessing hanuman ji 
may you become an embodiment of strength but hanuman ji was not happy with that may you become an embodiment of character hanuman ji was not happy may you become ageless means free from old age ajara again hanuman ji was not happy may you become amara deathless immortal hanuman ji was not happy may you become gunanidhi an embodiment of all noble virtues again hanuman ji was not happy so what made hanuman ji happy karahu bahut raghunayak chohu may bhagwan love you shower his love and affection upon you may his grace and blessings be upon you when this statement was made by sita mata hanuman ji became filled with devotion for bhagwan he prostrated unto sita mata again and again bar bar na isi pad si sa and then with folded palms hanuman ji said mother ab krita kritya bhayau me mata now i am totally fulfilled this was the one thing which i wanted from you that love and devotion for the lord bhagwan should love me that is the greatest achievement in life now i am completely fulfilled because your blessing can never go in vain because you are jagat janani mother of the universe so hanuman ji was extremely happy his mission was fulfilled and suddenly then he remembered that i have not eaten for so many days so mother i am so hungry now you don't have to do anything wonderful fruits are there juicy fruits sweet fruits ripe fruits you just have to give me permission so then sita mata said hanuman this ashoka vatika is protected by so many powerful gods hanuman ji said oh mother don't worry about them you just give me permission that's all what i want i am not scared of them i just want your permission so then sita mata said remembering the lotus feet of the lord go ahead o oh dear son eat to your fill so now hanuman ji goes to the other side of ashoka vatika because he did not want to disturb sita mata he starts eating fruits and then once he was full he started uprooting the trees so naturally the gods interfered all those gods he killed them few of them he just injured them and sent them back they went to ravana ravana sends another huge army all those army also single handedly hanuman ji destroys few of them again he leaves so that the message can be sent they again go back now ravana sends his own son akshay kumar along with another huge army in no time hanuman ji finishes all of them akshay kumar was also killed now ravana understood that <coughs> this monkey is not an ordinary monkey because to kill akshay kumar was not easy it was ravana's son so then finally he sends his most powerful son indrajit or meghnath meghnath goes with again a huge army in his beautiful chariot hanuman ji approaches a huge tree smashes him meghna jumps out of his chariot the chariot is crushed and then there is a duel in this duel wrestling hanuman ji gives a solid blow to meghna he falls down unconscious hanuman ji then climbs on top of a tree meghna wakes up and then he tries all kinds of magical tricks everything he tries he finds that this monkey cannot be conquered by simpler means finally most unhesitatingly he had to use the most powerful weapon what is that weapon brahmastra so he fixes that brahmastra to hanuman ji hanuman ji understand that he has taken brahmastra 
Hanumanji understands. In fact, he had got the blessing from Brahmaji himself that even Brahmastra will not have any effect upon you. <laughs> so that was Hanumanji. You see, all these Brahmastra and all their power comes from where? It's not from Brahmaji, it is coming from Bhagavan. How can the power of Bhagavan destroy the devotee of Bhagavan? This is the message there. It is just not possible. All these powers, whatever you see in this world, everything directly or indirectly belongs to Bhagavan alone. Exactly like whenever you open a tap, water comes. Where is the water coming from? The tank. The child who doesn't know anything may think that each tap has got some water. But the person knows that it is coming from the tank. And even that water in the tank is basically coming from ocean only. So the central source is ocean. In the same way, all the powers, abilities, talents, whatever you see in this world, everything comes from the Lord. How can any power destroy a person who is functioning in obedience with the Lord? Remember Hanumanji when he flew, how did he fly? Like the arrow of the Lord. He was an absolute instrument in the hands of the Lord. So therefore, literally, whatever Hanumanji was doing, actually Hanumanji is not there. Who is there? It is Bhagavan himself who is functioning through Hanumanji. Just like the flute of Krishna. Where is this music coming from? The music is not coming from the flute. Though it may appear that it is the flute which is bringing out music. No, it is coming from Bhagavan. In the same way, Hanumanji was a perfect instrument. So therefore, such a perfect instrument can never be affected by any powers of the world. So therefore, Hanumanji knew that this arrow cannot touch him. But then, he wanted to respect Brahmaji. Because it is Brahmastra. So therefore, what did he do? He decided that he will get affected. So what did he do? He became huge and then fell down. So one big chunk of army got crushed just by that fall itself. <laughs> he fell down. Actually nothing had happened to him. He was only acting as though he had fallen. Because he had a, he had a higher purpose. Hmm. Harumanji, you see, always you will find where he will never allow his ego to come into picture at all. It was not an ego clash. So he was ready to yield to Meghanatha. He was ready to ready to get defeated in the hands of Meghanatha because he had a bigger purpose. That purpose we will see. Hmm. So then Hanumanji falls down. Now nobody had any courage even to go near Hanumanji even though he was fallen down there. Because they had all seen how Hanumanji gave a solid blow to Meghanath and Meghanath fell down unconscious. So therefore nobody was going near Hanumanji, though he was fallen there unconscious. So then for a, what you call, a double guarantee, Meghanath sends another arrow, it is called as Naga Pasha and ties down Hanumanji ties down Hanumanji with that Naga Pasha. So when Hanumanji was fully tied down, then these soldiers came to lift Hanumanji. So finally, all of them lifted Hanumanji and took him to Ravana's court. Hmm? Took him to Ravana's court. Then what happened? And now Hanumanji woke up and saw this Ravana's court. And he found that this was the most majestic royal court in the whole world. Because what Ravana would do is whatever good things he found anywhere, he would bring it and put it in his court. <laughs> so it was a highly royal and majestic. All precious things were there. Unique things were there. And a huge crowd had gathered 
to see who this monkey was because hanuman ji had by then killed so many rakshasas literally in every family somebody or the other had died <laughs> so everyone had come there so it was as though you know see when a lion is roaming around nobody goes near but once the lion is caged then everyone gathers to look at the lion in the same way all had gathered there a huge crowd was there that court of ravana to have a look at this monkey who could single handedly kill so many rakshasas including the son of ravana so now there is a dialogue and what was the condition of hanuman ji hanuman ji saw that ravana was seated on a huge pedestal simhasana and all these deities presiding deities dik devatas they were standing there <laughs> and it is said that you know when ravana's eyebrows quivered these people shivered <laughs> that was the condition everybody they were all at the feet of ravana ever ready to obey him that was a kind of power he exercised upon the three worlds all the dikpalakas dik devatas they were all there at his feet serving him but what was the condition of hanuman ji hanuman ji was absolutely fearless like how garuda remains fearless in the presence of a snake in the same way hanuman ji was fearless and now seeing hanuman ji tied with this nagapasha completely bound completely helpless ravana gave a big roaring laughter he laughed atahasa but suddenly he remembered that this is the monkey who killed my son and suddenly he his laugh stopped <laughs> and then now there are three questions which he is asking question number 1 oh monkey who are you first question second question don't you know who i am third question why did you destroy the ashoka vatika hmm. so three questions are given so now question number 1 what is the question who are you and now a what is car hanuman ji gives a beautiful answer to this question he answers in such a way that that answer contains a glory of the lord hmm. sunuravan brahmanda nikaya pai jasubal birachati maya o ravana that lord who by the power of his maya has created innumerable cosmos that lord who has created infinite number of cosmos ananta koti brahmanda in sanskrit infinite crores of brahmanda cosmos that lord who could create by the power of his maya jake bal biranchi hari isa palat srijat harat dasisa that lord who empowers brahma vishnu maheshwara in creation sustenance and destruction of this universe jabal sis dharat sahasasan and kosa samet giri kanan that lord because of whose power adishesha adishesha is able to balance the whole world upon his head that world containing mountains and oceans forests that lord who empowers adishesha in carrying the whole world dharai jo bibid deh suratrata tum se sathan sikhav anudata that lord who takes avatar now and then 
in order to protect the virtuous and punish the wicked like you <laughs> teach a lesson like you that lord har ko dand kathin jahi bhanja te hi samet nrup dal mad ganja that lord who broke the dhanush of shiva and in the process shattered the arrogance of all the shattered the ego of all the arrogant kings who had assembled there among those kings ravana was also there so that lord who broke that shiva dhanush khara dushan trisira arubali badhe sakal atulit balasali all these monsters who were literally invincibles like khara dushana trisira wali that lord who killed all of them ja ke bal lavalesh te jite hu chara char jhari that lord because of whose fraction of power you became the conqueror of the three worlds that lord whose wife you stole like a thief i am the messenger of that lord this is the way hanuman ji introduces himself so literally in that question was who are you but in this answer there is no you there <laughs> there is only bhagwan you see this is called as egolessness that lord who created infinite number of cosmos out of the power of his maya that lord who empowers brahma vishnu maheshwara in creation sustenance and destruction that lord who empowers adishesha in carrying the burden of the whole world that lord who takes avatar now and then to protect the virtuous and punish the wicked people like you that lord who broke shiva dhanush and thus shattered the egos of all those arrogant kings that lord who killed all those invincible monsters like khara dushna trishira wali etc that lord because of a fraction of whose power you became the conqueror of the three worlds so actually your power also not yours it is bhagwan's only and that lord whose wife you stole not fought and taken no stole away kidnapped abducted like a thief i am the messenger of that lord so there is absolute fearlessness there Hmm. now the second question what is the second question don't you know who i am so what ravana expected was i am the one who lifted kailasa mountain even when lord shiva was seated <laughs> that is the answer he expected means that is the kind of strength i have what did hanuman say hanuman said yeah yeah we know who you are you are the one who became famous because if you are fight with kartavirya arjuna and wali so that story has to be known you know the wali's power anyone who was in front of wali 50% of strength would come to wali that was his power so nobody literally could defeat him so one day wali was doing his sandhya vandana so ravana decided to catch him from behind <laughs> so so he came back from behind he wanted to catch wali wali came to know that this fellow is behind he caught hold of him and it said that wali kept ravana inside his armpit for 6 months <laughs> not only that he then tied ravana you know when children are playing in the cradle you tie a toy isn't it so that the child can just be it so this ravana was tied tied as a toy in the cradle and who is the son of wali angad so when angad was a baby he was playing so one toy was needed so ravana was tied there <laughs> 
finally brahma ji had to come interfere and then save him so hanuman ji said yeah yeah your war with wali is very famous <laughs> there is one story another story is about kartavirya arjuna sahasra sahasra bahu so in that story it is said sahasra bahu saw this ravana in a very unique character 10 heads 20 hands and all that so he found that this is a unique animal i should have it so he caught hold of him and put him in his zoo so that others can see you know whom do we put in zoo all these unique beings with peculiar characteristics so the ravana was caught by sahasrava and finally ravana's grandfather pulasthirushi had to interfere and then free him so hanuman ji said yeah yeah i know who you are you are war with sahasrava when wali is very famous and the answer to the third question what is the third question why did you destroy this vatika garden so hanuman ji said see i am a monkey it is but natural that monkey will eat fruits and break branches it is a nature of any monkey and then when i was doing this these guards they came and tried to kill me now tell me who will not love one's own body so because they tried to kill me i killed them so it is my swadharma to protect my body but then hanuman ji became serious he said oh ravana listen to me so hanuman ji gives a loving advice to ravana ja ke dar ati kal derai jo sur asur chara char khai ta sombay rukab ho nahi ki je more kahe jaan ki dije ho oh, ravana you know who this rama is he is not an ordinary human being he is a lord of this universe of the sentient and insentient beings he is that lord whom even yamaraj is afraid yamaraj is called lord death so even death is scared of bhagwan so never become hostile to that bhagwan so the best thing lovingly i advise you with folded hands i advise you i request you give back sita mata and in this you don't have to feel any kind of you know what you call uh, don't have to feel ashamed of because bhagwan pranatapal raghunayak anyone who surrenders unto bhagwan he is an ocean of compassion he protects anyone who takes refuge at his feet hmm? he will never keep you know all the bad things in mind no he will forgive everyone anyone who goes to him surrenders unto him he will forgive all mistakes that is the nature of bhagwan in this way राम चरण पंकज उर धर हो लंका अचल राज तुम कर हो ऋषि पुलस्ति जसु बिमल मयंका ते ससि महु जनि हो हु कलंका कीप दैट लोटस फीट ऑफ दैट लॉर्ड इन योर हार्ट एंड देन रूल लंका this is what you have to supposed to do now ravana what have you done you are born in that lineage of pulasthi rishi such a great rishi ravana's father was vishravas vishravas father was pulasthi rishi and pulasthi rishi's father was brahma ji so you are born in such a noble lineage of pulasthi rishi why do you become that black what you call mark in that full moon you know that bright full moon so if rishab pulasthir she's noble fame is that bright moon you are like that black dots on that moon your act is like that shameful deed why do you bring bad name to your lineage ravana listen 
all this power glory strength prosperity position possession if a person attains remaining hostile to the lord that power position glory is not going to last such a person is like the river which spring up during the rainy season you know they are not perennial rivers those rivers just they they are born during monsoon season so when heavy rain is there there appears to be some ri- rivers etc actually they don't exist the moment the monsoon season is gone these rivers also dry up in the same way a person who becomes prosperous powerful etc without the grace of god that is not going to remain so therefore this is my loving advice to you सुनु दस कंठक हूपन रूपी विमुख राम त्राता नहीं गोपी शंकर सहस विष्णु अज तो ही सकही न राखी राम कर द्रोही हो रावणा लिजन आई बेट ऑन दिस इफ यू बिकम हॉस्टाइल टू भगवान there will not be anyone in this world who can protect you even brahma vishnu maheshra will not be able to protect you if you turn hostile to bhagwan ravana you know what your problem is listen moha mula bahu sul prad tyag ho tam abhimana भज हो राम रघुनायक कृपा सिंधु भगवान सियावर राम चंद्र की जय पवन सुत हनुमान की जय उमापति महादेव की जय बोलो भई सब संतन की जय so this is the philosophy part here we will spend some time hanuman i mean ravana your problem is abhiman abhiman means what ego arrogance and where is it born tama abhiman tama born out of the darkness of ignorance you see Tulsi Ramana contains all those valuable teachings of the Vedas the Upanishads the Bhagavad Gita of Bhagavatam beautifully in it there's a beautiful story and suddenly you will find a high philosophy so this ego or the arrogance which is born out of the darkness of ignorance this is a problem with you and what is the problem of this ego this ego is moha mool mool means a very root root of all moha moha means delusion a person who is possessed by the ego he is completely deluded and with this delusion when he lives his life what happens bahu sula prada he suffers in different different ways at all levels so this is the reason for all of our suffering you see the pattern first is avidya ignorance ignorance of what ignorance of one's own self from avidya comes abhiman ego from abhiman comes delusion moha and from moha comes sula sula means suffering all suffering can be you know you can go back to the root the root is ego but that ego is also because of the ignorance of one's own self right so where is it pointing to now <laughs> the upanishadic message the vedantic message so who is raghunayak bhagwan sri ramchandra ji he is a very self in us all problem is we completely live we live a life completely forgetting the self in us this is the point in fact a similar verse comes in bhagavad gita in the 15th chapter what is that verse nirmana moha jita sanga dosha 
अध्यात्मनित्या विनिवृत्त कामा द्वंद्वैर्विमुक्ता सुख दुख सन्नी गच्छन्त्य मूढाव पदम अव्ययम तत् दिस इज एक्जैक्टली दैट सो लेट अस बिकॉज़ देयर इट इज मोर एलैबोरेटली गिवन लेट अस सी दैट वर्स फर्स्ट निर्माण मोहा जित संग दोषा अध्यात्म नित्या विनिवृत्त कामा द्वंद्वैर्विमुक्ता सुख दुख सन्ने गति अमूा पदम अव्यय तत् जस्ट दि ओपोजिट वर्स यू टेक् इट इज अवर् स्टोरी फर्स्ट अध्यात्म नित्या सो जस्ट टू ऑपोजिट नो अध्यात्म एट ऑल नो स्पिरिचुअलिटी एट ऑल इन अवर लाइफ टोटली डिस्रिगार्डिंग द स्क्रिप्चरल नॉलेज नॉट स्टडिंग द स्क्रिप्चर्स एट ऑल लिविंग ए लाइफ अकॉर्डिंग टू अवर लाइक्स एंड डिस्लाइक्स दिस इज वेर एवरीथिंग बिगिन्स नो अध्यात्म अध्यात्म मीन्स pertaining to self hmm. adhyatma vidya is not there then how will be our life first is see that nirmana moha so nir remove it what is left <laughs> mana and moha exactly the same thing abhimana and moha a person who lives without the guidance of the scriptures that person will be ruled by the ego not by the lord so mana abhimana this mana is a beautiful term miyate anena iti mana that with which you measure what a beautiful term this each term of sanskrit is amazing when you go to the root and try to find out what that meaning is miyate that with which you measure you see what is ego that with which you measure <laughs> it's called ego <laughs> what are we doing constantly in this world we are measuring ourselves with others isn't it at the physical level at the ability level at the talent level we are constantly measuring and if i find that i have more than others then there is abhimana that mana expands i start valuing myself more i start measuring myself more i feel happy when i see that i have more than others what happens when what i have is less than others apa mana <laughs> inferiority complex you see i feel jealous envious miserable isn't it true that all our life is nothing but this <laughs> constantly we are comparing us you may use the term peer pressure peer pressure nice term. but the basic thing is inferiority complex superiority complex that's it everybody is miserable you see so we are all ruled by our ego ego is nothing but constant measuring ourselves with others so where is this ego coming from this wrong notion that i am this body where did this wrong notion come from absence of right understanding that i am pure consciousness i am supreme self this vidya is not there thus came avidya and based on avidya now i identify with the body and say i am this body the moment i say i am this body ego is born mana is born and once this wrong notion creeps into our mind i consider myself as this body so naturally i will consider others as that body i am this body he is that body she is that body so basically my understanding is a vision of plurality and wherever this vision of plurality is there comparison comes competition comes jealousy comes hatred comes all vicious tendencies come mana that is called as moha delusion what is delusion i am different you are different he is different she is different we are all different and the only way to happiness is i should prove myself to be superior to others this is called as moha hmm? you know what happens when a person is ruled by the ego 
when that person sits and meditates and looks into his heart what does he find he finds that ego is present there and what is ego it is nothing but limitation nothing but imperfection because identification with the body means what body is limited body is imperfect body has all kinds of defects so naturally i consider myself as defective so that ego is ruling my heart and when i look into my heart whom do i find bhagwan or the ego ego and what is the nature of ego ananda swarupa or dukha swarupa dukha swarupa so when i look within i find myself miserable i don't find any happiness in meditation i am not even able to sit quietly for even for some time see the psychology why is it that i am not able to meditate why is it that i am not able to look within because that monster is sitting there terrible monster dukha swarupa so naturally i am not able to go within then if i don't find happiness inside where will i search happiness out uh, happiness outside because inside it is not there because whenever i have tried to go within i could not i find found only a restless disturbed monkey mind so naturally i then try to go out outside what do i find sense pleasures i find and here i misunderstand the pleasures of the senses as the true source of happiness the reflected happiness i think that is a real happiness actually it is only a reflected happiness what is a real source of happiness the self there i don't find so therefore i go out the very direction of seeking happiness is wrong you see this nirmana moha moha delusion what is delusion what is the definition of delusion atasmin tad buddhi <laughs> simple what is not there you think it is there and what is there you think it is not there true happiness is in the self you don't find it moha happiness is not outside you find it moha you see that is called as delusion so wherever mana is there moha will be there so now naturally i find that there are so many things being and situations which can give happiness to me where will i run outside or inside outside nirmana moha jita sanga dosha adhyatma nitya vinivrutta kama so with moha comes two defects kama and sanga these are the two defects born out of delusion you desire things which you don't have you get attached to things which you already have so kamana means desiring things which you don't have sanga means attachment to things which you already have these are the two things so isn't it true that our entire life is this trying to preserve what i already have trying to acquire which i don't have yes or no whole life is nothing but kama and sanga i am attached to things being situations i am running after things being situations yoga kshema there is another term used apraptasya praptihi yoga praptasya rakshanam kshema trying to acquire what i don't have is yoga trying to preserve what i already have is kshema whole life is nothing but this where is it born out of delusion where is this delusion coming from out of mana where is this mana coming from absence of self knowledge avidya you see avidya kama karma everybody is busy oh busy trying to find happiness in the place where there is no happiness then what happens to this person dvandvair vimukta ha sukha dukha sanehi this person falls into dvandva so that is the end result dvandva what are the dvandva sukha dukha bas when conducive environment comes there is sukha when unconducive environment comes there is dukha in short this person is tossed up and down by the happenings of the world this is called as total helplessness 
my happiness is not in my control my happiness is decided by the happenings of the things beings and situations around me hmm. profit sukha loss dukha honor sukha dishonor dukha praise sukha criticism dukha gain sukha loss dukha in short i become a total slave this is called a slavery and this is called a samsara samsara means this the external world of happenings decide my peace i have no ability to remain peaceful what is real spiritual spiritual strength or spiritual growth whatever happens in the outer world if i am able to keep my mind quiet that is a true spiritual strength that is true spiritual progress but a person who has no spirituality at all he will never have this strength he will be tossed up and down and the world is a world of uncertainties you don't know what is going to happen next moment in such an uncertain world this person's happiness also is absolutely uncertain this is the way we live this way of living is called the life of a samsari samsarati iti samsara constant change is this world so in this world of constant change where everything is uncertain everything is impermanent my happiness also gets tossed up and down depending upon the external happenings this is called as dwandva you see the sequence what is the first one avidya ignorance of the self next one mana the ego next one moha delusion next one sanga kama getting it as over next one dwandva bas this is our life krayo kray vipo vip <laughs> Swami ji why did god do this to me why me we say why not you what is so special about you <laughs> i am the right person in the wrong world i am the right person i am the only good person oh, everybody is bad but still all bad things are happening to me very fact that bad things are happening to you shows that you are a bad person No, no, I am a good person. Who are you to give certificate to yourself? Certificate should come from Bhagwan. That alone is a valid certificate. Otherwise, all other certificates are fake. <laughs> There is no value. Okay. If you are suffering, you deserve suffering. The point is this: all suffering belongs to this ego. And where is this ego coming from? From wrong notion that I am this body. where is this wrong notion coming from wrong notion comes from a big mistake we have done what is a big mistake completely ignoring the knowledge of the self completely ignoring god in the language of devotion we say god in the language of knowledge we say self both are one and the same one is the language of the heart the other is the language of the head there is no difference at all now since we are talking of a devotional text ramayana is a devotional text therefore raghunayaka term is used bhagwan shri ramchandra who is this bhagwan our own self <coughs> right so see the description here moha mool bahu sul prad tyag ho tam abhiman ravana give up this abhiman this is the cause of all your misery this abhiman this ego in you and that is born out of tama darkness of ignorance give up this ravana this ego is the cause of all your suffering moha mool it is the very root of all delusion bahusul how many ways are you suffering do you know ravana you may be the king but i know that you are miserable <laughs> he person how much our power or wealth he may have he is an egoistic person he can never be happy 100% we 
Why? Because he is a slave of karma, krodha, lobha, moha, madha, matsuri, all negativities. His mind will be filled with all kinds of negativities, hatred, anger, jealousy, stress. It doesn't matter who he is. If he is ruled by the ego, he is miserable. Ravana, I know you are miserable. Give up this abhimana. Bhajahu Ram Raghunayak. That's all what you need to do. Bhagavan is the very self in you. Turn to him. Surrender unto him. He is an ocean of compassion. What was the effect of Ravana upon this beautiful teaching? Let us see. Jadapi kahi kapi atihita bani Bhagati bibek birati nayasani Bola bihasi maha abhimani Milaha mahami kapi gura bada gyan Though Hanumanji said the very essence of all the scriptures with full of devotion, with full of wisdom Whatever Hanumanji said was nothing but the essence of all the scriptures. But what did Ravana do? Did it have any effect upon Ravana? Bola because he laughed. Maha Abhimani. That embodiment of ego. His holiness, Mr. Ego. That Ravana, he laughed. And you know what he said? Oh, we are so fortunate. We have got a wonderful guru in the form of a monkey. Milahamahi kapi guru badagyani. What a wise guru we have got in the form of this monkey. Mrityu nikat ai khalato hi lage se adhama si khamana mohi. You are going to teach me? How dare? Yes, a person who is going to die, he talks too much. That is why I find that you are talking too much because you are going to die. Hanumanji said, I am not the one who is going to die. You are going to die. Vinasha kale viparita buddhi. And when Hanumanji said, You are the one who is going to die, Ravana became angry. Hey, who is there? Kill him. So all those soldiers. They rushed to attack Hanumanji. It was at that time Vibhishna comes. Vibhishna says, Oh, king, we should not do that. He said, Duta, he is a messenger. A messenger should never be killed. You can give some other punishment, but not this. So then Ravana said, Okay, then shall we mutilate him completely? Chop his limbs, etc. and send him? Everybody was silent. Then Ramana got a wonderful idea. Kapi ke mamata poonch par Sabahi kahao samujhai Tel bori pat bandhi puni Pavak dehu lagai I know that these monkeys are extremely attached to their tail. Their tail is a real strength. So we will do one thing. We will wrap this tail, soak it in oil and set fire to it. Then once his tail is burned, he will go back to his master. He has been glorifying his master so much. Then that master also will come. Let me see who this master is and how powerful he is. So there was a unanimous declaration. <laughs> Everybody agreed. Then what happened? We will see tomorrow. Tail burning episode. Okay. Let us chant Hanuman Chalisa. Shri Guru Charana Nijamana Mukuru Sudhari Barana Raghubara Bhimala Jasu Jodaya Kupala Chari 
बुद्धिहीन तनु जानी के सुमिर पवन कुमार बल बुद्धि विद्या देहु मोहि हर हु कले सबिकार जय हनुमान ज्ञान गुण सागर जय कपी सति हु लोक उजाग राम दूत अतुलित बल धाम महावीर विक्रम बजरंगी कुमति निवार सुमति के संग कंचन बरन विराज सुबेश कानन कुंडल कुंचित केश हाथ वज्र और ध्वजा विराज कांधे मूंज जने साज शंकर सुवन केसरी नंदन तेज प्रताप महाजग विद्यावान गुणी अति चातुर राम काज करिबे को प्रभु चरित्र सुनिबे को रसिया राम लखन सीता मन बसिया सूक्ष्म रूप धरि सिया दिखावा विकट रूप धरि लंक जराव भीम रूप धरि असुर संहारे राम चंद्र के लाय सजीवन लखन जियाए श्री रघुबीर हर्षि उर लाय रघुपति की नी बहुत बड़ाय तुम मम प्रिय भरत ही सम भाय सहस बदन तुम हरो जस गावे अस कहि श्रीपति कंठ लगावे सनकादिक ब्रह्मादि मुनीसा नारद सारद सहित अहीस जम कुबेर दिग पाल जहांते कवि को वित कहि सके कहांते तुम उपकार सुग्रीव ही कीना राम मिलाए राज पद दीन तुम्हारो मंत्र विभीषण मान लंकेश्वर भय सब जग जान जुग सहस्र जो जन पर भान लील्योता ही मधुर फल प्रभु मुद्रिका मेल मुख माहि जल धिलांग गए अचर जनाहि सुगम अनुग्रह तुम्हारे थे थे राम दुआरे तुम रखवारे होत न आत्म्या बिनु पैसार सब सुख लहे तुम्हारी शरण तुम रचक काहु कोडर आपन तेज संहारो आप तीनों लोक हांकते काप भूत पिशाच निकट नहीं आवे महावीर जब नाम सुनावे ना से रोग हरे सब पीरा जपत निरंतर हनुमत वीर संकट ते हनुमान छुड़ावे मन क्रम बचन ध्यान जोला सब पर राम तपस्वी राज तिन के काज सकल तुम साज और मनोरथ जो कोई लावे सोई अमित जीवन फल पा चारों जुग पर ताप तुम्हारा है पर सिद्ध जगत साधु संत के तुम रखवारे असुर निकंदन राम दुलार अष्ट सिद्धि नव निधि के दाता असबर दीन जान की माता राम रसायन तुम्हारे पास सदा रहो रघुपति के दास तुम्हारे भजन राम को पाव 
जन्म जन्म के दुख बिसराव अंत काल रघुबर पुर जाय जहा जन्म हरि भक्त और देवता चित्त न धरई हनुमत से सर्व सुख करई संकट कटे मिटे सब पीर जो सुमिर हनुमत बलबीर जय 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 हनुमान गोसाय कृपा कर हूँ गुरुदेव कि नाय जो सत बार पाठ कर कोय छोट ही बंदी महासुख हो यह पढ़े हनुमान चलीसा हो यह सिद्धि साखी गौरी सा तुलसीदास सदा हरि चेरा की जय नाथ हृदय महडे की जय नाथ हृदय पवन तनय संकट हरण मंगल मूरति रूप राम लखन सीता सहित हृदय बसहु सुर भोप सियावर राम चंद्र की जय पवन सुत हनुमान की जय उमापति महादेव की जय बोलो भाई सब संतन की जय ओम सर्वे भवंत सुखिन सर्वे सन्तु निरामया सर्वे भद्रा पश्य कशिदुखभागे असतो मद्गम तमसो मोतिर्गम मृत्योर्मात गमय ओं पूर्णमद पूर्णमीद पूर्णा पूर्णमुदच्यते पूर्णश पूर्णमाधाय पूर्णमेवशिष्य ओं शाते शाते शाति हरि ओं श्रीगुरभ्यो नम हरि ओम